Paris, writer of Bad Astra, you might have noticed that I have been missing. And if you didn't, that's fine. So I have been on hiatus due to my life blowing up, as it does at least once a year. But I spent good use of that time in the mountains of Virginia trying to befriend cows and failing. So I'm back in the city with no cow friends making videos again. Death! It's something that a lot of adults and some children think about. And I feel like that I'm in a unique position to think about death because uh, on one hand, I am immortal until proven otherwise. And on the other hand, I have clinical depression. So I've decided to rank a bunch of different ways to die in space based on probability and um, preference. Eris, I don't see any units or numerical values on these axes. Uh, what, uh... What are numbers? We're numer not doing anything quantitative. This is qualitative data. I have an English degree. I don't understand graphs. Okay. All right, first, everyone's favorite way to die in space. If you were out in the vacuum of space, according to this Harvard article that I read, first step, you want to make sure that you exhale because your lungs will explode, if not, because the air expands without the pressure of gravity in our atmosphere. Step two is embolism. Embolism? E-B-U-L-L-I-S-M. I majored in English. That's a new word, though. When you're in a vacuum, the boiling point for a lot of liquids lowers, and so that also includes the blood in your body. So your blood boils. And if that doesn't kill you, it's going to give you a lot of bruises. And then step three, uh, 15 seconds with no oxygen, you're unconscious. So total, you have about a minute 15 seconds to live in the vacuum of space. That's according to Harvard. And uh, just saying that name twice makes me feel like I am $200,000 in student debt. I think in terms of preference, it's hella goth, which I am attracted to. Um, but the probability of me actually entering into a vacuum of space is pretty low. So my heart says it goes here. All right, next up we have getting shot into the sun. If you were going to be shot at the sun, you'd get about 1.3 million miles away before you are absolutely uh, burnt up to a crisp. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna put that right there. Ah, oh, what a way to go out. Right? Yeah. Sounds pretty nuts. Uh, the scarcity of water because it is a rare resource within the greater universe. So there are like two ways that you can think about this. You can think of a uh, hyper-realistic sort of scenario. Uh, according to Astra, The Expanse is a good one for that. Yeah, Expanse. It's a great show. However, I do understand the Star Trek Voyager reference, which is a uh, laughably unrealistic portrayal of a species that can fold space, but not, you know, do chemistry on a large scale. Basic chemistry. Because there is a limited amount of drinking water on the Earth, I think this is significantly more probable than me getting into the vacuum of space or getting shot into the sun. But honestly, it's not that preferable because I'm a thirsty, thirsty bitch. My facts are my feelings in this video. Take that, Ben Shapiro. All right, hygiene maneuvers. <laughs> so hygiene maneuvers are actually really dangerous for you and are a stroke risk because of the high acceleration. So in The Expanse, uh, there's one character, I won't say who, but because, you know, spoiler, this character does end up dying of a stroke due to hygiene maneuvers at the end of one season. It's act And it was in the books, but it was a different character. Yeah, so what that about character inertial dampeners? Inertial dampeners are stupid plot magic. Speaking as a writer, I am all about that plot magic. Cool. So, hygiene maneuvers, is this something I can experience on Earth? Yes? Uh, yeah. If you accelerate downward while in the pull of Earth's gravity, you can go at like 2, 3 G. And in fact, fighter jet pilots often pull ridiculous Gs. Yeah. And like, that can be fatal. There. Let's talk about black holes again. We have a video going over how you would die in a black hole, which is spaghettiification. Astro, play the clip. Oh, a space banana. Whoa! Oh, no! Oh! This is how it ends. Oh, science taught me. Oh no. You shouldn't have said that Pluto wasn't a planet. I'd really want to die by black hole. I know that's not necessarily something that my therapist should hear. You know, like this is something that I would try to seek out as opposed to like accidentally getting into. We have contracting an alien STI from James T. Kirk. However, 
because there are two iterations of James T. Kirk, I have split them up. You know what, because I've met William Shatner, it's probably going to be higher on probability, but lower in preference. Yeah, that feels right. Is he in frame? Yeah, he's in frame. Let's talk about this whole planet. Mercurian Icy Hot Treatment. Mercury, not the hottest planet in our solar system, despite being the closest to the sun, because it's a loser. So the hottest planet in our solar system is Venus. This straight it is! Oh, absolutely! But hey, the sexiest planet is Pluto, and we all know it's a planet. So on Mercury, uh, during the day, it gets up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit, 430 degrees Celsius. Yeah, pretty hot! The problem is, is that it gets cold at night, and I hate being cold to the tune of negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 180 degrees Celsius. One Mercurian day is the equivalent of 176 Earth days, so it's a very slow roast. You're approaching this with such exacting scientific fervor. You know what they say about English majors. We know what science is. I think it would be really fun to die on Venus while drinking pina coladas and getting caught in the acid rain. However, it is a literal hellhole of a planet clocking in at 900 degrees Fahrenheit or 482 degrees Celsius. Surface is rocky and horrible. And fun fact, the sulfuric acid rain doesn't even reach the surface. It actually evaporates before it can hit the surface of Venus. We'll put it with the sun. Next one. Eating alien plants that you haven't tested to not be poisonous yet. I don't want to eat fun plants. I could do that on Earth though, so it's like a little less exotic. But like, the alien plants is the best flavor, you know? Getting killed by the radiation on the way to Mars. A lot of the challenges with current Martian missions in order to get people on the surface is that there's a lot of radiation in that distance of space. Also, it takes like, what, two years to get out to Mars? Usually a year and a half to up to like four or five years depending on the route you take. So yeah, going to Mars, you're... You're getting irradiated. You're I mean, getting if you, guaranteed if, cancer. If you don't die of suffocation, you will likely die of cancer. And also thinking about how your bones get less dense because of the less gravity in space and on Mars. I've never broken a bone. That was my own, I should clarify. I have a pina colada in that one experiment. Mm. I don't have a pina colada in this one. So it's going there. Another way to die in space is of old age on an intergenerational uh, mission to colonize another planet. I don't like this option because I don't want to think about aging. I'm immortal. That's kind of how I feel. Colonizers in general have caused so many issues on this planet that why would we subject that to another one? Also, if there's already intelligent light there, that's a whole ethical issue at that point. <laughs> Colonizers, <laughs> colonialism. That's my hot take. Drowning in the biggest ocean in the solar system would involve going to Jupiter, and you would suffocate before drowning because of all the gas. Though it is made of liquid hydrogen, so that means it's also super cold. And super... is it high pressure? It would be high pressure, since it would be underneath all the atmospheric layers of Jupiter, right? I think so. Mm -hmm. A lot of this is based on feeling, and now I'm recognizing the flaw in that system. Next death method, Bogon poetry. Now, as an English major, I feel very confident on being able to speak about the quality of poetry. I will roast bad writing without any sort of hesitation, as my degree gives me the right to do. Bogons might exist. Okay, why not? Suffocation on the fart planet, Uranus. So the atmosphere is made of hydrogen, helium, methane, um, hydrogen deuteride? Deuteride. Deuteride. Despite having an English degree, I'm pretty illiterate. It also has hydrogen sulfide on it. You can hang with the nice gentleman over there. The next way to die in space is through a kinky alien orgy. I'm very asexual and this seems like a logistical nightmare. What about Neptune? Dying by the hurricane on Neptune. It's also shrinking, fun fact. The giant hurricane is shrinking. Neptune's atmosphere does have hydrogen sulfide, which is the rotting egg smell. There are no fun ways to die in space. This is what I'm learning. Yeah. Next way to die in space, not listening to Sigourney Weaver. Is that an Aliens reference or an Avatar reference? Both. Okay. Both is good. 
So I can't say you should always listen to Sigourney Weaver, but if you're on a spaceship with her, yes, you should. So uh, since childhood trauma seems to be very popular when I put them in the scripts, uh, let's talk about the Magic School Bus episode where they go through the solar system and Arnold takes his helmet off on Pluto and freezes to death. Listen, they tried to get around it in the cute, like, cartoony way of, oh no, he's actually sick and he has a really bad cold. But they cut to black for a commercial break right as his head freezes, and that's death. This child died on a school field trip. Pluto, 10 out of 10, want to be on Pluto. I do plan on putting in my will, should I die, that NASA needs to shoot me onto Pluto so that I can haunt it. And you know what? I'm glad that gravity is tempering my ego a little bit. <laughs> OSHA violations on spaceships. They happen frequently. Exploding consoles, there are no seat belts, farm tools that are not secured properly or stored, impaling people. Okay, but that was a really, really good scene in that episode. Like when the guy just... A bunch of... The Expanse. I'm great. Moon ghosts. We've been to the moon, and we we know there are no ghosts. We could theoretically get dead people on the moon sooner than we could shoot me off to Pluto. God, I'm a horrible person! <laughs> Mermaids on Europa. Europa has a lot of oceans and has been named one of the places that would be most likely to also be able to support life in our solar system as a result. So, European sirens. Wait. Here we go. Alien parasites. Apparently, this is another expanse reference with the proto molecules that. Yeah, it's the whole inside. like season one art. Uh, so oh, the show I have never watched. You need to watch the expanse. I mean, what are the odds of an alien getting you pregnant? Hopefully zero. Uh, what are the odds of an alien looking shiny and you want to touch it and then it consumes you? Yeah, it's probably right. It seems very painful. Getting stranded out in Saturn's rings because an ice chunk got stuck in the thrusters. Why don't you just turn the thrusters on? Wouldn't that melt the ice chunk? You would think. When it comes to AI with GPPs that are malfunctioning, I would rather have Marvin be the one that I have to deal with than an egotistical monster, Max. That's how I feel. Through unforeseen circumstances, as predicted by my birth chart, I don't know how to read this, so I have no idea of how I could possibly die, and CoStar denied my job application. Bears. Bears. Next way to die in space is by fist fighting a rover. Everybody thinks that, like, rovers are super small and super cute. They're bigger than I am. They're much bigger, and therefore would definitely win in a fight. Um, however, shout out to my friends Rachel and Ant, because we talked about this, and so Rachel said that it would be a good idea to set out bear traps and trap the rover's, like, wheels in a bear trap in order to win that fight or get the upper hand. And then Ant suggested a mech suit, essentially, or armor, built out of the dead rovers. Either way, I'm dying. <laughs> like, I can't win against a rover in a fist fight. I think it'd be fun. Climate change. The final way to die on my list is by falling into an entangled black hole after meeting the love of your life at a karaoke bar and massively it up with her right away. And then you have to think about it for the rest of your life in this entangled black hole, however long your long consciousness actually survives. In conclusion, they're probably done. I need a drink. Thank <laughs> you.